<laughs> what is going on guys? It's uh, JS Media or, uh, oh fuck my back. Or uh, Justin, if you remember me as that, I guess. I haven't really mentioned my name. Cheers. I'm gonna try and change this channel to uh, more of a vlog now. It's kind of cool to go through these life changes and kind of share it with what like people could be experiencing in these things. <laughs> But to get started, one more, one more. The video topic for today is about the, for the five things that I think you guys, as electrical apprentices, should know um, for as a first year. Okay, the, the, some of the things that will probably help you out to move you on to the next step and earn your respect in the trade with your company. So, for number one is uh, be willing to learn. You know, I can't stress this enough. I've had so many people that I've trained wanting to do their own thing, okay? And at the end of the day, the supervisor is coming to me or that electrician that's training that person and they're gonna ask, oh, how is he doing today? It's, you know, it's his first week, blah, blah, blah. Well, so-and-so wasn't performing properly. <laughs> and then, the question comes up the next week is, should we keep him or her, right? So you have to think about these things that if you're misbehaving and you just don't wanna follow what the trainee, the trainer is saying to you, forget about your job with that company, okay? Yep, they, there are so many people coming out of colleges, you know, pre-apprenticeship programs, Etc. experienced people, they, they can kick you out and get someone new, okay? So this is a really competitive trade and treat it as if um, it was something really important to you. I mean, you're, it should be really important to you, but think of it as like, this is your opportunity of a lifetime and in the future, you'll be making bank. It's good to have an open mind on how other electricians work because a lot of people operate differently. They all, they all have their different methods like, oh, I like to do that. You should try out this. Actually listen to it, it's not bullshit. It's, it's trying to help you out, okay? Uh, attendance, oof. So the first, the first week that I started, I was still moving from my hometown to uh, this place in the GTA area, in, um, in the Toronto area, I guess. And um, I was commuting an hour and a half every day for the whole week, okay? And my foreman didn't know, but he's, he later on then found out. But in a sense, he didn't know. I was late twice by 10 minutes. I was late twice by five minutes, okay? These minutes are crucial in your first month or probation period that you have, okay? Because they want a person that they can rely on. You know, unfortunately, if you're gonna be calling in sick all the time, yep, making up excuses, and just not being there. It shows a lack of respect, you know? It's it's like, hey, fuck you, I'll fire you. <laughs> you don't want to get in trouble by the foreman, that's the worst feeling. I was like, being yelled at, but uh, that's all changed now, we're, we're all good. But yeah, also be willing to work weekends and overnights, okay? Overnights, yeah, I'm telling you. From 6 a.m. all the way till 12 p.m. You know, these shifts are killer. I haven't done an, uh, a night shift, <laughs> but I've done weekends from, from Monday to Sunday. And you know what? It actually shows them that you're willing to be there for the company, so, so try uh, in the first few months like show them that you're willing to be there it's it's really important that that supervisor or foreman knows that hey like i can rely on this guy actually so keep that in mind the third one is uh bust your balls off okay seriously bust your balls off i'm not fucking joking here um to to give you a representative to give you like an idea, I want to see the sweat dripping from your fucking helmet, okay? The one day I was like busting my balls off, I, I had the supervisors up my ass, like grab this material, grab this, grab, pick up my shit, treat it like a dog the whole time. 
and um, I had a timeline to get finished uh, to finish all these straps for this conduit that I had to lay down okay and at the end of that the sweat was dripping from my helmet it was dripping out of the side of my face my shirt was sticking to me show them that you can work hard and that your work ethic is strong okay they don't want someone that's lazy slow they're gonna fire you for someone better okay now work your ass off and come to work with a strong work ethic okay i was wearing this helmet here and you can see puddles of just sweat accumulating on the top of this <laughs> seriously and um with that being said it'll earn you the respect um, I've only been with the company for three months, but I've worked so hard where I have a nickname here. I'm Smiley B because I smile so much, even when times are rough. Okay, this pays off, and they and they supply me with a client light. How amazing is that? This thing is so sick. I got two of these. The fourth one is come prepared. Come prepared, okay? Because we are a Clean, a clean trade and technically we, I would say we were we were some of the girls of the trade um, come prepared have a clean work uniform clean boots clean your helmet it's fucking disgusting if you come into work and you smell like shit okay and also coming with the right tools I didn't have a reamer I didn't have a tester I didn't have a bunch of specialty tools that unfortunately I needed in the first two weeks and uh it's quite disappointing when the supervisor will ask you, and they're like, yo, can I borrow that? And you're like, dude, I don't even have that. So come prepare with the right tools. Ask. At the interview, ask what tools you'll need because you know there's some job sites that you're gonna need different things like a drywall saw, like you're gonna like just so many things. Okay, ask. Ask for the tool list. Important. Get it off your phone. Number five, get off your phone. This is a small little thing that I want to throw up there, but it's so common in the workplace, especially for me. I'm a very uh, sociable person. And you know what? If, um, if my girl is texting me, then um, I'll go answer that. <laughs> but there's some times where it's just not needed, okay? And that's just something to relate to, okay? That's, that's just, that's how I work. Um, but I'm not addicted to it. You know, I've seen people, they'll be on their phone for 15 minutes. You know, you could be hanging up that light. You could be wiring those lights. In 15 minutes, I could have got like three things done by then. Okay? Get off that phone. It's, it's not worth it. We're in a dangerous ass trade. You get shocked by a wire, touch a live wire. If it's three phase, you're going down the ground and bye bye man bye bye your life okay this this shit's not it's not funny to mess around here okay if, sure if you have time if like you know you just put up something take like a 30 second look at it because we're in a we're in an age where phones are, are everything that's an attachment of our body okay i understand but please wait till break or at least wait till a time where you know you finish everything that you needed to for the first part of the day Check your phone, see if anything is out. But don't be obsessed with it. Don't be changing your music all the time because you got a speaker. Don't be texting your girlfriend all the time. It's more for emergencies and when you finish your shit, okay? So I hope that uh, clarifies some parts of the, the video. But um, yeah. Good luck to you first year electricians and um, I hope you guys uh, do well. Peace.